This week, Crime Stoppers and your local police agencies are asking for your assistance. Police are looking for the person or persons responsible for breaking into a Kitchener area business. On Sunday, July 5th at 5.28 a.m., an unidentified male broke into the Little Shortstop store here at 153 Country Hill Drive in Kitchener. The suspect smashed a window, then climbed in through the opening. The suspect then ransacked the counter and passed cigarettes through the broken window to a second person waiting outside. The suspect then fled before police arrived. The crime was caught on video. The suspect is a white male, 18 to 20 years, clean shaven with short dark hair and sideburns. He was wearing a bandana on his head, t-shirt, sleeveless dark colored vest and lighter colored pants. Crime Stoppers will pay up to $1,000 for information leading to an arrest in this break and enter or any other serious crime. You won't be asked to identify yourself or testify in court. So call Crime Stoppers at the toll-free line of 1-800-222-TIPS. And remember, crime doesn't pay, but Crime Stoppers does. This weekend, pet owners in Perth County can have their pets vaccinated against rabies at no cost. It's all part of a program aimed at reducing the number of rabies cases. Plugged in's Kathy Riedel says it's the 12th year for the campaign. There are 11 vets taking part this year. The first rabies clinic was held on Wednesday. The second one will be held this Saturday from noon until 4 p.m. The Perth District Health Unit is organizing the event. Okay. Shelley Helm says last year almost 3,000 animals were vaccinated. Yeah, this is a uh, clinic that is offering rabies vaccinations at a low cost to all pet owners in Perth County. What is the importance of getting your pet vaccinated? Well, Perth County still has a high number of animals that test positive for rabies every year. Uh, so if your pet comes in contact with a skunk, uh, a fox or a bat which is positive for rabies, you are putting yourself and your family at risk of contacting the virus and uh, rabies is a fatal illness. The shots are done quickly. There's no examination involved so vets are not tied up for a great length of time. Perth County is actually one of the only places left in Ontario that still has a fairly high incidence of uh, rabbit animals every year. Uh, so it, it kind of stands out within the province. So for those people who say, why bother? Well, again, I look at their families and they're protecting themselves and their families if they have small children. If their animal comes in contact with a rabbit animal um, with the vaccine, there's there's a better chance of protecting the family and uh, it is the law. We can uh, enforce them to have it. Rabies is highly infectious and if it goes untreated can be fatal for both animals and humans. There's two different forms uh, of symptoms. One of them is commonly called the, the dumb form or the uh, <laughs> paralytic form where the animal gradually becomes more depressed and um, progressively more, or, or I should say, less responsive to normal stimuli and um, maybe goes away and hides or uh, just doesn't interact with people and it just becomes worse and worse until finally death, death uh, comes around. The other more classic form, I guess, is the furious form where the animal becomes uh, quite often early on just a little bit nervous or jumpy. Sometimes there's some muscle twitching. Uh, and from there quite commonly quickly progresses to the typical aggression and frothing at the mouth that everyone associates with rabies. Um, so those are the two forms, but the end result's always the same, the animal dies. What is the effect on humans if they're in contact with rabies? Well, if you're bitten or even scratched by an animal, you should, first of all, uh, if you're at home, wash, your, wash the wound with soap and water immediately and then either that or go to your doctor or the emergency room and receive treatment there. You definitely need to contact your doctor and you definitely need to contact the health unit so that we can follow up and find out whether or not uh, the animal has been vaccinated and we will proceed with a period of confinement then to make sure that the animal is in a healthy state. For more information about your nearest rabies clinic, for your pet, call the health unit at 271-7600. For Plugged In in Stratford, I'm Kathy Riedel.
Coming up, Roger's Top 10 Video Rentals of the Week. And right after that, a conversation with Cheryl Plouffe from the Deep South. Stay plugged in. Hi, welcome to Roger's Video. My name is Chris Stockett, and I have this week's top 10 Roger's Video listing. At number 10, we have Man in the Iron Mask featuring Leonardo DiCaprio. At number 9, we have Good Will Hunting, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck in one of the season's best movies. At number 8, we have Titanic featuring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet is absolutely stunning in this movie. At number 7, we have U.S. Marshal featuring Tommy Lee Jones as if Marshal chasing down fugitive Wesley Snipes. At number 6, we have The Wedding Singer. And at number five, we have Primary Colors. Right above that, at number four, we have He Got Game. This is an NCAA basketball recruiting movie featuring Jesus as the main basketball player who's being recruited and his father. At number four, three, sorry, we have Wild Things. At number two, we have City of Angels, this week's feature movie with uh, Nicolas Cage and Meg Ryan. And at number one, we have Deep Rising, a heavy-hitting action thriller on the water featuring monsters, of course. So this week's feature movie, City of Angels. This movie stars Nicolas Cage and Meg Ryan. Nicolas Cage plays an angel who has to choose whether to fall to earth or not in order to sit and get his love. Meg Ryan, the doctor, who is questioning her faith, her reason, and her purpose as a doctor. I'm one of the doctors here. Are you in despair? I lost a patient. You did everything you could? I was holding his heart in my hand when he died. And he wasn't alone. Yes, he was. People die. Not on my table. People die when their bodies give out. It's my job to keep their bodies from giving out. Or what am I doing here? It wasn't your fault, Maggie. I wanted him to live. He is living. Just not the way you think. Over 200 people filled the Crystal Ballroom at Kitchener's Walper Terrace this week for the second annual Downtown Jazzy Fashion Show and United Way fundraising event. Plugged In's Leo Rosecat gives us this behind-the-scenes look at the show. This is going to be a different type of fashion show because we've got professional models mixed in with people from the community like myself and even Kitchener Mayor Carl Zare and Miss Oktoberfest Danica Quinn. But I understand that the models from Gemini are going to be the ones that are wearing the bikinis, I hope. Well, I gotta go get my makeup bag here and go get ready for the fashion show. Now, Nancy, this is a great opportunity to showcase some of the stores that are downtown. Yeah, it's super. We, um, we like to be able to invite people down because a lot of people are, are not familiar with the stores that are in the downtown. So having a fashion show, show seems like the ideal way to present what we do have to offer. There's a lot of people in the fashion show tonight that aren't professional models, so we've got an opportunity to get some advice from a professional. Now, this is Audrey Wilson, and she is the owner of Gemini Modeling. Audrey, what kind of advice do you have for the girls that aren't professional models? Most importantly is just a smile. That's one of the most important parts of being a model, and uh, stand up tall and be friendly. Tonight's a show where you're not going to be in a runway. You're going to be actually talking to the people and it's going to be a very hands-on show, so to speak. So just to be friendly and to be yourself. Kitchener Mayor Carl Zare is also in the fashion show. Now, have you ever been in a fashion show before? I've just been in one before and that was earlier this summer, actually. And how do you find modeling? Do you think this might be a new career for you? or? Well, I think I should probably keep my day job. I, I'm not sure I'm cut out for this, but uh, it's kind of lots of fun, you know? And how did you get into modeling? Um, I was a shy little kid, so my parents decided they threw me in it. You know, lots, lots of people, lots of lights. But I'd be more outgoing. It didn't work. <laughs> and how do you feel about it when you're out there and wearing cool clothes and oh, modeling? I love it. It's so much fun. Just you just walk around and be a totally different person to whoever you want to be. The outfits being modeled at this jazzy fashion show are all from downtown Kitchener. Stores like Just Between Us on King have a very funky line of modern clothes. And on the other end of town, Market Village boasts beautiful boutiques like Rajan's and Chez Jacqueline's. Don't know 
some beautiful models. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Leah Rose Cat. And now we go to the Gulf of Mexico where Cheryl Pliff is on assignment. Cheryl, can you describe the scene for us? Well, the scene here is uh, Hurricane George. Uh, we're, at, in fact, uh, in the projected path of Hurricane George. It's expected to hit here probably within the next 36 hours or so. Luckily for, uh, for me, I'll be out of here by then, uh, not <laughs> due to evacuation, but because that was the, ex the time that we had uh, decided to leave anyway. Right, right. And have you enjoyed your stay down there doing research? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, I'm here on assignment, like you said. Yes. And, uh, yes. <laughs> no, we're having a great time so far. And, in fact, if I look out on the balcony, out onto the water, it's hard to believe that down south in the, in, in the Gulf of Mexico, there's, in fact, a hurricane going on. Because here, it's beautiful. It's a little overcast, but sunny nonetheless. Um, and, and it's just beautiful. Yeah. And so you are eventually coming back. I am coming back. We're leaving uh, Saturday morning to uh, make our trek back to Canada. Uh, of course, you know, hurricanes are something that we don't have to contend with as Canadians, so this has been quite an experience for me because it is a topic of conversation for, uh, for everyone down here, and this is something they deal with uh, pretty much on a, on a normal basis. Yeah, but I understand you're coming back to a new assignment. I am. I'm quite excited about my new venture. Uh, this is the first time, actually, in the three, well, this is our third season of Plugged In, and this mm -hmm. is the first season I'll be, I'll be able to host the program throughout the weekdays as opposed to the weekends. That's right. So unfortunately, I won't be working with you anymore, John, but Aww. I'm looking forward to this new assignment. Aw. Yes, and we'll all miss you, too. Oh, but good thanks, luck John. with your new assignment, and uh, hope you catch that plane. Thanks very much. Thanks, Cheryl. Bye, John. Well, that's it for the weekend edition. A reminder to catch the weekday edition Monday with Richard Haig and Cheryl Plus. A special thanks to all our volunteers who make this show happen each and every day. See you next weekend when we'll introduce you to our new co-host. Have a great weekend.